if you are hardworking, if you see as there's no mountain too high and you have a desire to go after whatever it is, what is stopping you? That is my question. What is stopping you? You're listening to The Life and Money Show, a podcast that brings you the stories and strategies of people who are living a meaningful and intentional life by design, building true wealth for their families and impacting the world around them. And now here are your hosts, Annie Dickerson and Julie Lamb. Hey, everyone. Annie Dickerson here together with Julie Lamb. Julie, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good, but I'm sure you're doing better out there down in, you guys are in Southern California somewhere, I think, right? We are. We left a little less than a week ago from Oakland and we drove down first to LA to see some friends. And then now we're in the Palm Springs area where it is mighty toasty. You would love it. It's so sunny here, but it is very windy. So we have this Airbnb with a pool in the backyard, which uh -huh. the kids love, except it's so windy. They're like, oh, it's so cold. Yeah, so it's been an experience, but we have friends here as well. And so that's what I love about slow travel is in having the flexibility to take the time to travel and being able to work from the road is that we can, you know, make these stops along the way. Our ultimate sort of destination, where we're going to spend a longer time this trip is Sedona. But rather than just taking a few days off of a W-2 job and then flying to Sedona and then doing all the things, trying to do it all in four or five days and then going back home exhausted and having to go back to work the next day, I love that we have the flexibility. I know you guys have a big trip coming up too, to be able to plan these short stops along the way to see friends, to see family, to check out some, like we stopped by this dinosaur park the other day that has like just off the side of the highway, you know, that has like animatronic dinosaurs, just totally random, right? But if we'd been working against the clock, we wouldn't have time to do that. But that's the most valuable part of what we get to do through our business, as well as what help our investors do through investing in real estate is give them back their time to be able to do fun stuff like this. Yeah, hundred percent. It's it's everything. And I know a lot of the people that, you know, our listeners as well as people in our investor club and for you and I, you know, on the team, we're all, you know, love that travel and the travel and experiencing new cultures and places is really what excites us. And, you know, it's what we do it all for. So that's so awesome that you guys are doing that. And I know you guys have another couple of trips also booked. This is the first of three for the rest of the year, right? So you guys will be yeah. on the road some more. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You got to, for all our listeners, you know, we always preach, you got to have those, that vision and those goals for your life, not just for your work, but for your life. And so this uh, at the beginning of this year, my husband and I sat down and we said, well, what do we want, you know, by the end of this year, what do we want to have been able to check off? And we said, well, we want to be on the road. We want to travel for four months out of the year. And so January passed, February passed, and we we're like, okay, I guess we better get on it. Like we've got this big <laughs> goal. We better get on it. So we planned this trip and we've got a couple others coming up. But that's the beauty of living this sort of digital nomad entrepreneurial life and having that flexibility, and which is what we always try to empower our listeners and our investors to be able to do as well. Speaking of which, on our show today, we've got a special guest, Dr. Erin Hudson. She is a chiropractor as well as a real estate investor and co-founder of Quattro Capital. And Erin's got such a unique story. She's like a go-getter. She's got five kids, if you can believe it. And she started out with, in one year, she opened not one, but two chiropractic practices. And from there, she really, she had a mindset shift and she realized she could leverage other people to help her reach her goals and to create a win-win, which is then how she then expanded into real estate, first with single family homes, and then now with what they're doing with multifamily. So such an incredible and inspirational story of a powerful woman just sort of starting from no real estate experience and really scaling up very quickly. Yeah. And it was funny because her story, I think, is kind of similar to mine in that the way that she initially got into real estate investing was by collecting mailbox money. Not that that's how I got started, but it was really the catalyst of that mailbox money that 
took me to where we are today. You know, I've been real estate investing prior to that, but it was really having that mailbox money. That was like this, where you have that kind of like aha moment of like, wow, I want to do more of this. But yeah, it was just awesome to hear from a woman in the space who, you know, had ideas about wanting to get into real estate, but felt like, you know, it's not for her. It's only for the rich or it's only for men or all of these, you know, false assumptions that we put in front of us as, you know, as women getting into the space that we think it's not for us and we can't do it. So it was just great to hear her story. And I had asked her in probably maybe the middle end of the show about kids and how she did all of this with having five kids. And, you know, it's something that I feel like, you know, I'm faced with all the time is that I have kids, right? And when you hear about men in the space, not that they don't have kids, but every time we bring them on the show, we're like, how do you do it all? You have five kids. And they (laughs) always say the answer is always the same, right? It's always like, well, I have an amazing wife, right? And the wife takes Mm -hmm. care of the kids. Well, in our case, most of the time doesn't translate the other way where we say, oh, well, we have an amazing husband, not that they're not amazing, but it generally doesn't translate the other way. Women are always still responsible very much so for the kids as well as growing their business. So it was really interesting to hear, you know, just her response to that and, and, you know, raising children and building businesses, and, you know, scaling and all that kind of fun stuff. So it was great. Mm-hmm. And she talks about, she's got some great tips for how she was able to make that leap from single family to multifamily. And she talks about investing as a limited partner, passive investor. And so for all of our listeners who are new to the real estate space, maybe you want to get into real estate, but you don't want to deal with all the hassles and time commitments of being a landlord. Well, passive investing through real estate syndication, real estate syndications is a great way to do just that. You get all the benefits of investing in real estate and owning real estate and none of the hassles of tenants, toilets, and termites. So if you're new to this space, a great way to start is to grab a copy of our book. It's called Investing for Good. And you can get your free hardcover copy. Just go to goodegginvestments.com forward slash book. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into our conversation with Dr. Aaron Hudson. Aaron, welcome to the show. How are you? Very, very well, Annie. Thank you for asking. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, Aaron, I know our listeners are going to be super impressed with your story. You were a mom of five kids business owner, chiropractor, avid real estate investor, wake surfer, and snowboarder, among many other things. You've traveled all over the world with your family, volunteering to help improve the lives of others. And on top of all of that, you've run, I cannot believe I'm saying this, 16 marathons. Is that still, have you added to that or 16, the latest count? 16 is the latest count. Wow. 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 That is astounding coming from somebody who has run zero marathons and barely a 5k. So 16 marathons is super impressive. So these days, I know you have quite the entrepreneurial spirit, both with your chiropractic practice, as well as your real estate investing business. So I want to start there. So did you always know growing up that you wanted to own your own business and get into real estate investing? Or how did those come to be part of your story? I love that you asked that. No, I did not know that I was going to move into this real estate space because here's the truth of the matter. I thought it was for really rich people. So I thought that I did not qualify to be in the realm of real estate And boy, was I wrong. And it's been exciting. And I can't believe what is possible when one thinks it is so untouchable. So far from the truth, never thought I'd be where I am today. I'll say that much. Yeah. So when you started your chiropractic practice, so tell us about that. What was that journey like? And then how did you even know that you could start investing in real estate? Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind me, if it's okay, if I just kind of touch on my upbringing just a little bit to give a little picture to your listeners. Awesome. So I think it really just started back way back growing up and my parents were just owned by their J O B, which stands for a lot of times just over broke. And I didn't have that mom and dad that were home to feed me breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It was a more of fin for yourself. And I remember at a very young age, ladies, that this was not the life that I wanted to live. At a very young age, I remember thinking, how in the world is it that somebody has to live almost like in jail 
is how I looked at it, right? Because here we are in this world with so much free agency. How is it that somebody like my parents who I loved and adored could be building somebody else's legacy? And it bothered me greatly. So at a very young age, I knew that I wanted, I didn't care what it was. I just knew that I wanted to be my own boss. I did know that. And fast forward in due time, it was becoming a chiropractor. I absolutely have a love for people. And it was, I came from being an athlete all through high school and college. And there was something great about being able to change people's life. And it was through health. And I was all about health and nutrition, which made it pretty organic to move in a direction where my uncles came from. I had two uncles that were chiropractors and I did my residency and I worked with another individual and I thought, shoot, this isn't how I like it. I want to be my own boss. I don't want anyone telling me what to do type of thing. So anyways, fast forward, I opened up my first practice and it was incredible. And I had said to my husband, you know what? Forget number one, let's open up a second office. And I'll never forget him saying, look, we just went in loads of debt to open up this first practice. What he didn't see is the benefit and all the fruit that came from having my own practice and me being able to call the shots, not to mention changing lives, being able to employ people that giving people jobs and so on and so forth. And so he so kindly said to me, you know, Aaron, I'm okay about the second practice being open, but let's just do it when we have enough money to open the practice so we don't go deeper into debt. And so of course I honored that decision and I didn't tell him. I just was kind of putting the money away, putting the money away. And it was literally five months. And I said, I'm ready. I've got the money. Let's go open up the second practice. And he said, you got to be kidding me. And fast forward within 12 months, we had two practices opened over 30 plus employees, other doctors, efforts working in our practices. And so that's really where I was at. And shoot, I feel like I need to take a deep breath and let you guys ask a question because that was a whole lot of information. So that's really how it it started with my practices. Wow. It really seems like, you know, from a young age, you almost had this like calling, like something inside you that was like, you know, I see what's going on around me, but I don't, I don't want that for my life. And it's how fortunate that you were able to see that so early on. Cause I think a lot of people don't have that wake up call until later in life, but you must've been so observant and so in touch with what you wanted that you were able to really define that from an early age and then get on that path and figure out, okay, well, this is what I want. So how can I get there? And I got chills when you said you opened, I cannot believe it, two, not one, but two practices in a year. And I love that story about your husband. (laughs) You know, there's always got to be one in a relationship (laughs) to to balance it out. Otherwise you'd run too far too fast. And so you got to have one to balance it out. And I love that though, because it seems like it kind of fueled your fire. You were like, okay, well, I can do this, but I'm going to pay this off real fast and we're going to be ready. And so you had two practices and then, so then what were you like, was your vision like, okay, well, we're just going to expand. We're going to keep opening new offices or what was your thinking at that point? Well, I will tell you that at the time here, I was two practices. And by the way, it's all about that challenge. There's something that gets me fired up about waking up each day. It doesn't matter what you're doing, what you're a part of. It's the challenge being put in front of you that literally fuels my fire. It doesn't matter if it's in my practice with my kids, whether it's in real estate. I love the challenge. And I like to almost equate it to this. This is a good one because I think women can relate. When we go and we have $100 and we have an option to either go to Nordstrom's and go buy one shirt. Or we can go to Nordstrom Rack or Marshalls and we can get five shirts, right? So it's always about that challenge of how can I come out on top? And to me, I know it sounds probably lame, but maybe y'all can relate what I start talking about. You're speaking, I feel like Julie's like nodding over there because I hear her talking about this stuff all the time. (laughs) Yeah, so that's really where it started. And I think just being fully transparent with you, and I think a lot of women listeners really tune into your show and For me, it was really about, here I was in practice, having massive success. And if I'm forthright with you, greed set in. Greed set in, and it was a matter of how could I have more? How could I have more, right? It's just never enough. And that's really kind of what was going on in my head because I could see 
how we were not even at full capacity and there was still so much room for growth in our practices. And so what I did is I hired a coach to start coaching me. I was paying her a thousand dollars an hour to come in to help me scale my company. And you'll never believe what came from it. So she finds out about my practice, learns all the ins and outs. And she says, Aaron, you're in your own way. And I said, you got to be kidding me. How am I in my own way? And she says, because I see very clearly that you're trying to do all of the $10 an hour jobs versus putting aces in their places and letting them help you run most efficiently. And so, now you're talking about my side. That, that's <laughs> how I think. I'm working on that too. I'm in my own way too. <laughs> so she says to me, listen, I know you just hired me, but I'm sorry. I'm not coming back next week for our call until you hire five more additional people to do this, 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 and this. And I remember being resentful. I got off my coaching call with her and I said, how dare she? Here she is firing me and I'm the one paying her a thousand bucks, right? <laughs> And so let me tell you, fast forward, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. The best thing. I still look back and go, I cannot believe I was running my practices in that fashion. But here's what I will tell you. When you go from good to great to exceptional and you get a taste of it, oh my gosh, it makes you so much more grateful for the journey that I had been on, right? So with that being said, it really just opened up brand new doors. So love that. So I want to talk about that a little bit. So you got the two practices, you're building your business, you got out of your own way, you know, utilizing your time where it should be spent, right? Hiring the rest out, which is such a great business move. One that we also had to learn (laughs) in the moment, same thing. The moment we did that, our business just went through the roof because we were able to focus our time on the things that we were good at. So then you're doing all this stuff. You're doing well, you're growing your business. How did you tell us about the real estate part? Where did the light bulb come on? How did you make that transition? Awesome. So here we go. She came into my practice, helped dialed me out. I got out of my own way, which what did that do? It literally made me hone in on my skill set, stay in my lane where the most dollar and bang for the, where it made sense for me to work, right? Which was seeing patients, loving on my patients, you know, greeting them when they come in, letting the rest of the team do the rest after I was done doing my magic, right? So now all of a sudden in between patients, I had all this time. Well, not all this time, but I had time, right? So what did I always want? I always had this vision and passion for real estate even though I thought it was something just the wealthy did. And a friend said, Hey, listen, I got to tell you what I've been doing. And he shared with me. And I said, my gosh, that sounds amazing. I like the idea of mailbox money. And so lo and behold, my first purchase was a six pack of homes. And the gentleman that was selling them said, you know, I'll sell you one of my homes. I've got here this six pack and going back to go big or go home. Uh, My husband and I went to dinner with this gentleman. He showed us the homes and I whispered in my husband's ear and I said, oh my gosh, well, hold on. Let me digress for a second. Here I am living in Southern California. 1500 square foot house is $800,000. Here I am looking at a package of homes, six of them at $50,000 a piece. So talk (laughs) about the difference and the caliber, Mm -hmm. right? So of course, fast forward, I lean over to my husband and I said, babe, I don't think we should just buy one. Let's get the whole six pack. So the gentleman goes to the bathroom. He goes, babe, where in the hell are we going to get $300,000? And I said, I don't know, but let's find a way. And so again, he thought I was crazy. And I just said, let's figure this out. And I hope for all of you listeners hearing this, there is so much empowerment when you push through the barriers. Did I know how I was going to pay that $300,000 to get those homes? I didn't. Let's be honest. I had $100,000 in my bank account. I used $30,000 on a credit card. I called my father-in-law and what did I say? I said, hey, I've got this great opportunity for you to make 7% on your money. And I would love to see if perhaps we might be able to have a working relationship. And if I default, I'll give you these properties type of thing. And so literally that is how we made it happen. So you just have to be willing to do the uncomfortable. Was it uncomfortable? It was, but we struck up a deal and I came out on the other side. (laughs) That is so 
such a good reminder. I love that the you have to be willing to do the uncomfortable. And it's so true. And I always talk about that in real estate is you have to be persistent because things are always going to come up and things are always going to come your way that isn't going to work out for you or things will seem like it's not going your way. And if you don't you know, have that drive to persist and to continue beyond where your kind of comfort zone is, you'll never find that success, that level of success that most people are looking for. So you get into that deal, you, you take down the six houses and, you know, you find, you raise the money, essentially. I'm assuming you never raised money before. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I had never raised money. But again, remember how we talked about Nordstrom's and that high you got from the four t-shirts? It's yeah. the same freaking high. <laughs> you six properties and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. You don't even need alcohol. I was just high on life. I was out with <laughs> right? <laughs> you didn't need a six pack of beer. You got a six pack of houses. <laughs> yeah, yeah exa- I like that. Thanks, Sammy. That's a good yeah. one. <laughs> so, you know, that's really where it all got started. And from there, it was just a matter, you know, within two years, we had acquired 26 rental properties. After I got my confidence built up just on the six pack with my father-in-law, I thought, shoot, if I can do this with him, there's got to be another way that I can spin this, right? And so fast forward, it was other individuals that were reaching out to me, friends, other doctors in my practice that were like, well, shoot, how are you doing that? Can you help me? And so I think when we have our hearts turned in the right place, truly, truly, truly for people to win without manipulation, everybody gets the best of both worlds and it's clean. It comes from a clean, pure heart. And there's nothing that makes me feel better when I go to bed at night, that I'm making sure that I'm doing the right thing for people and by people on every action. Right. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I started to acquire and looking for more properties. And truthfully, what I would do is I would buy four keep, I would sell three. So let's just make it super simple. So you're, I don't confuse your listeners. These are not the true numbers, but just walk with me for a second. Let's pretend I bought four homes. I paid $100,000 for these four homes. I sold three and I sold the three homes for $33,000 a piece. So basically I sold the three and kept one for free. And so that's how I acquired my 26 properties in such a quick fashion. I think roughly 12 or 13 of them were free from positioning them the way that I just shared. Mm. So pretty powerful. Or markets were these in? Yeah. Indianapolis, Indiana is Mm. how I did it. And, and here's the other thing, like I was not the specialist y'all. And I hope this speaks to your listeners as well. I was not the specialist. So when I would talk to people about buying homes and if I would get a question of, man, why should we go with you versus ABC company? You want to know what my response was? This was my response. I would say, you know what? You're probably better off with company ABC because they've been in business for 20 years. I've only been at this for the last 18 months. I'm just sharing with you what's worked for me. And over and beyond that, remember, Sally, when I got in the space, I paid $50,000 for what I'm selling you for $40,000. So the truth of the matter is you're getting a better deal than I first got on my first deal. Love that. I love that strategy. It reminds me of the Burr Mm -hmm. strategy, right? But I don't know. There's so many different strategies that, what is that one? The avalanche strategy or whatever it is where you're the snowball strategy or something like that. There's so many different ones. I still remember when I was first getting into this real estate world in a more serious way. And I learned about all these strategies and I would like graph them all out. And I'd be like, oh, if I did the snowball strategy, I could retire in five years. And if I did <laughs> you know, the Burr strategy, I could retire in two years or whatever. And I think a lot of you know, getting into this space is about figuring out what works for you and understanding what strategy feels comfortable for you and what will allow you to feel comfortable enough to then get a little uncomfortable, like you were saying, right? But I think in the beginning, there's got to be that sort of the waiting pool of like comfort zone, right? And a lot of that is identifying what works for you. So that's awesome that you found that. You did the 26 rentals, 12 of them for free. Wow. Love that strategy. If anyone wants to talk about that, definitely reach out to Eric. Can I I ask a technical question here? A logistical question. Okay. So 
it sounds great, but I'm wondering like, how is she doing that? So, okay. So you, let's say, let's go back to the four houses. You buy them for a hundred thousand. So they're 25 K a piece. You sell three of them for 33 each. And so are you doing anything to the properties to then be able to turn them around and sell them higher? I don't know if you could handle my response, Annie, but it's probably going to blow your mind. So just be <laughs> with yourself. What if I told you that I was the chick that, I don't know if you've heard of a double closing. I'm sure you have. Mm -hmm. yep. So yep. let me just but tell our listeners. Yeah. Tell our listeners, explain yes, what that is. Let me just digress because yeah. I'm going to tell your listeners so we can break it down more efficiently. Great. So let's just go back again, having to push through. How bad do you want what's in front of you? Because your actions are going to show us how bad you really want it. Right. And so if I look back as to what was going on back at that time, there was something called a double close and I had no idea about it. I did not have a real estate course that taught me how to do what I did. And so what happened was I actually called a title company ladies and I said, Hey, Sally, I heard that there's something called a double close. My name's Erin and I am just new to this. And I'm just wondering if you would just give me five minutes of your time and just walk me through how that works. I'm just curious. And she was like, Oh, I'd be glad to help you. Right. And so she literally is like, okay, well, you have a first contract. Let's just use Julie, for example. Okay. Julie is the seller. She's going to sell me a property. Let's do it for round numbers. Y'all $50,000. Julie and I create a contract to close on June 1st on property A. Well, I said, okay, great. This is fantastic. I'm going to buy this for $50,000. Well, I already know I can turn and sell it for 60,000. So all of a sudden, whatever my market hears that what I'm doing and they're like, Hey, well, do you have anything available? Help me. So I said, sure, Annie, I'd love to help you. As a matter of fact, I got this incredible property. Let me share it with you. So I would share the property with Miss Annie. And I said, it's only $60,000. Here's what it's got. And, but the thing is, we really got to get this puppy closed in two weeks. Annie goes, man, this is a great deal. Of course, I want to buy it. So Annie and I now have a contract. I'm going to sell it to her for $60,000. All right, so let's go back, you guys. Here's what it looks like just to refresh. Julia and I have a contract for $50,000. She's selling it to me. I'm going to turn around the same day and sell it to Annie for $60,000. So with that being said, Annie brings her $60,000 to title, which takes care of Miss Julie, right? It pays her the 50,000. So let's do the math together, ladies. 60 minus 50 is $10,000. So I walk away with $10,000. It was never my money to begin with. It's all about Man, time. Those, it makes me think for some weird reason about those extreme couponing shows. And I'm like looking through all these pamphlets and trying to say, you know, and they walk away so victorious with like a hundred dollars in their pocket. But here you are, you're like, oh, well, you know, I just got this one deal. I'm going to sell it over here and I'm going to walk away on closing day with $10,000 in my pocket. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love, I love that. It. What a cool strategy. Yeah. And so that's anybody who's listening as well. That's kind of like what wholesalers do, right? Is they go out there and they find a property for cheap, they buy it and they sell it to a retail investor and they make the spread in between. So if anyone's heard of wholesaling as well, that's kind of the strategy that they use there. Before I want to dive in more to, because I know you don't do just single family homes now. I know you've scaled up and you're doing some multifamily, but before we dive into that, I did want to touch on the fact that you have five kids. And Annie and I have five kids, but between the two of us. So I can't even imagine having, I have three, she has two. I can't even imagine having two more kids because my life is a zoo uh, as it is. I mean, it's, I always say that that's the word it is because, and it's gotten a little better because my kids are a little older now. They're nine and eight and almost six, but man, when they were like, you know, four, three and one or three, two and newborn. I mean, I watched these old videos and it was a literal like zoo. So you build out your two practices, you're buying these 26 rentals. Talk to us for like two minutes about what that was like having children in between all of that, raising children, being a mom, right? Like, I feel like, you know, there's a male dominated space that we're playing in. We're succeeding, but we have something in front of us called a family, called laundry, called cooking, called dishes, and all these other responsibilities of running a household. How did you wade through all of that? That's such a great question. First of all, to all you lady listeners that are out there, first and foremost, give yourself grace because look at all of the hats that we wear 
as women. And the commonality is that we all feel like we're not doing it good enough. Right. And so first and foremost, I feel like in our, just in general, that you hear a lot of times from women, I don't have the time. I got kids. I have my full-time job. Honestly, I have no room to even (laughs) to hear that comment because here I was with two practices, five kids. And I'll never forget at one point swinging my baby carrier under my desk while I was working on patients a month old, right? Like it takes tenacity, but you also got to believe that thank God the Lord gives us grace and he only expects for us to do the best that we can. But you have to remember, it goes back to your why as cheesy as that sounds like, what is it all for? And when you look at yes, working mom, I've got, I didn't even share this point part. Yes, I acquired 26 rental properties, but I went on to do over 230 buy and sell transactions in my warm market of selling these homes to other individuals that wanted to get in the space. I wasn't even, ladies, listen, I hope this inspires you because it's not to be braggadocious whatsoever. I didn't have a real estate license. I didn't come through an education program. So I don't know about you, but if you are hungry, if you are hardworking, if you see as there's no mountain too high and you have a desire to go after whatever it is, what is stopping you? That is my question. What is stopping you? And when it goes back to children and being a mom of five, let me ask you a question. Have you gotten your kids buy-in? Are they hating your job that you do or are they absolutely on board and they're like, thumbs up, mom? Because I'll tell you, and I don't mean to be bipolar with my conversation here, but my daughter, who's now 22, bought her first investment property at the age of 16. So are you including them in creating generational wealth? Or are you Mm -hmm. saying it takes too much time to show them the way so you're not talking about it? These are conversations I didn't have with my parents and what I want and I yearn for when it comes to my children to learn the ins and outs of how truly to leave a legacy and create that generational wealth. We'll get back to our conversation with Aaron in just a minute. Have you been thinking about investing in real estate, but aren't sure you have the time or the desire to manage the investment? Perhaps you're afraid, like we were, that you'll make the mistake of choosing the wrong market or the wrong team and lose your entire investment. Well, that's exactly why we created the Good Egg Investor Club. We do the work of identifying solid real estate investment opportunities in the best markets around the country and then partner with you to acquire these investments and then we'll all share in the returns. We'll identify the growing markets, strong, experienced teams, and the solid deals. We do all the heavy lifting of managing the tenants and the renovations. And as a passive partner, you get to enjoy all the benefits of investing in real estate, monthly cash flow, long-term appreciation, and the ongoing tax benefits. When we first discovered passive investing through real estate syndications, we realized it fit perfectly into our busy lives. We could put our money to work for our families, work less, and get more time back in our days so that we could focus on what matters most and discover our true passion and purpose in life. We've now helped hundreds of people invest passively in real estate syndications and are seeing the positive impact it's had on their lives. We invite you to partner with us by joining the Good Egg Investor Club today so you can start putting your money to work for you and get more time back in your day because we know that when people have more time in their days, they can do the true work they were intended to do and the world will be a better place. To sign up for the Good Egg Investor Club, go to goodegginvestments.com slash invest and we'll take it from there. That's goodegginvestments.com slash invest. And now back to our chat with Dr. Erin Hudson. Gosh, I love that so much. Love that so much. Annie and I talk about this all the time. We definitely include our kids. I have been now formally in this space for the last five years or so. And so when my kids were four, three, and one, was talking to it 
you know, about it with them on the level that they could understand now that they're a little bit older, they have different, you know, bigger responsibilities. And Annie has included her son on some flips that they did and getting to tour and walk around. But I love that. I love combining sort of your roles and responsibilities, right? As a mom and as an entrepreneur in the real estate space, how do we bring those two worlds together so that we can kind of kill two birds with one stone? And as we all know, that's what we women do best is we multitask and we bring things together and get two things done at the same time. So I love that. And wow, 230 other properties outside of that. I can't even imagine doing that, running your two practices and having five kids. So that's amazing. I did want to jump to, before we run out of time, before we move into the last section of the show, tell us about how you made the move. I think there's a lot of people that listen to our show who have done a couple of rentals, maybe even done 10 or 15 rentals, and they want to get into multifamily, but they haven't really figured out how to crack the code and haven't figured out where they might be able to play in that space or how did you make the move? Yeah, this is such a great question and such a powerful, powerful experience that I had. I'll never forget. I had a friend that had reached out to me and said, hey, let's go to this. They're doing this two hour, tell you about multifamily, so on and so forth. And I remember telling her, I have no business being there. That's only for the rich, but I'll go with you just to appease you. And I remember sitting in the front row with my arms crossed, like, what is this going to be about? Oh, great. They're going to sell us on something else, right? And I kid you not, there was like an aha moment that took place. And I like to relate it to Monopoly, right? Playing the game of Monopoly and being the girl that lands on Vermont, i.e. the single family house, collects $50. And all of a sudden, as the gentleman is speaking, I find out very clearly that it is 100% possible to be the chick that no longer lands on Vermont collecting $50, but to land on Boardwalk with 50 doors over one roof and to collect far more than $50, but multiply that times 50. And I went, oh my gosh, there's really a way? And so go figure, the rest is history. I was on fire from there and ran as quick as I could. And as a matter of fact, I felt like I owed it to all of my friends and family and doctors that came with me in the single family space. And so I had reached out and said, you're never going to believe it. There's something that's far better than the single family, but, but, but it's a much larger learning curve. So when I get there, I'm going to take you with me if you so desire. Hence, because I primed my people, the first deal I took down, I was able to raise $2 million because I stayed in contact while I was learning, right? So it's pretty powerful. But I would say for anyone out there that is really curious and deadly serious about finding out more about the multifamily, absolutely connect with Annie or Julie because there's no better way than to get in as a limited partner and really see what it's all about. See if you have a liking to it. See if you're vibing with what it is that multifamily can do for you. Because once you do that, then you're gonna find out if you wanna jump in with both feet and whether you wanna be an active person or if you would just prefer to have the power of the passive side, which it's absolutely incredible And the space is so advantageous for many reasons. Love that. If there's one thing I've learned from everything that you said, it's that when Aaron's on fire, you watch out. Things are about (laughs) to happen. And so you have this aha moment. You're like, oh my gosh, I don't need these green houses anymore. I can trade up for these red hotels in Monopoly, right? And you're like, okay. So then you leave that you're like on fire. You're like telling everybody. But I think we know a lot of people in the space who get to that point. They're like, I'm going to do it. And then a couple months later, they're like, it's too hard. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to go back to what I know or what I'm comfortable with. And so you left there and you were like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this leap. I know there's a steep learning curve, but I'm going to do it. And so then walk us through, you know, how long did it take? What was that process like to take down that first deal where you were able to raise $2 million? Well, again, just being transparent, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. What my first year and a half, it was a year and a half, ladies. It was a year and a half. And here's why. If there's one thing that I could leave to your listeners, if they're active and in the space, please don't be me. I was the chick that was wearing the hat to find the brokers, wearing the hat to find the money, wearing the hat to find the properties. And it was exhausting. And I remember thinking, man, if this is really what it's all about, I don't think I'm cut out for this. I am certainly not qualified. So I will tell you fast forward, as soon as I landed uh, the deal there, my, my first deal, it wasn't 
again, rainbows and butterflies. And I was used to being in business for myself by myself. And it was great. What I will say is make sure if you're going to invest with someone or whoever you're going to link up with, make sure that the values align. Make sure that your goals that you're going for is what Julie and Annie or whoever it is that you're working with are headed in the same direction. Because I will say the property is absolutely important. The property management is super important. But above all, friends, the most important thing is the general partners that are controlling the deal and helping to execute the business plan. And at the time, I did not realize the importance of just that. And so with that being said, I have got the most incredible partners. And, you know, with Quattro Capital, there's five of us. And one would say, you're crazy. Why do you have so many partners? Well, my friends, remember, I was the chick trying to wear all the hats. And so when I found a team that had brilliance and their strength was my weakness and vice versa, could you imagine the strategy in coming together with a high-powered team? It was absolutely incredible. Why? Because I get to stay in my lane. I get to stay in the lane, just like in my practice. Remember how my coach put me in the right direction and said, stay in your lane. This is where you're most going to make the biggest impact. Same concept. I get to work with Quattro Capital and I get to stay in my lane where I thrive, where I'm going to have the largest impact. And together we are flying like eagles because of the strength of our team that we have. It's awesome. Love that. Such a good point to make. Annie and I talk about this all the time as well. It's so much about how our relationship came together and still stands today is leveraging each other's strengths and weaknesses. And it's been, it's been a great partnership. And I love the, you know, making sure that the values are aligned. That's something we always talk about as well. Is the deal important? Is the market important? You know, do the fees matter and all of that? Sure. Yes, it does. But at the end of the day, whoever is running the deal, if they value and what's important to them isn't the same as you, it's just like any other relationship. It's not going to last long and it's not going to go well along the way. Such great points. So really quickly, how many multifamily deals do you own? Do you guys own now? How many have you closed? So let me just share really quickly with Quattro Capital. When we talk about the power, right? And having a strong, strong team. That's exactly what happened through a pandemic. We just closed on nine deals just in the last 12 months together. And so wow. that definitely happened for us for sure. Oh yeah. my goodness. That's amazing. And are, what size properties are you guys buying? Yeah. So, you know, we'll do a little bit of everything. Do we prefer the 200 plus doors? Yep. Mm -hmm. We got a new one with an accepted LOI today, over 240 Ooh. doors, which is awesome. Congrats. But here's the truth of the matter is, you know, people get caught up and hung up on the number of doors. But yeah. my question is, how much are those doors producing? And what's the bottom line? What are you able to put right. in your pocket? Because for me, I have a number I want to hit. So with that number, for me, I have to break it down and reverse engineer it. What's it going to take to get there? So that's why with Quattro Capital, I've just got goals where I want just our team to take down some apartments together, which we have, we've already taken down two apartments and we're on a mission to get there. So I can hit my number with that. And then everything else is just icing on the cake. So it's fun stuff for sure. Reverse engineering guys, anybody out there figure out what your number is. I still remember. I heard this on a podcast three, four five years ago, whatever it was, and was like, reverse engineering. What does that mean? <laughs> and <laughs> we, can, we should do a show on reverse engineering and finding your financial freedom number and what all that looks like, but love all of that. All right. We're going to roll into the life and money show spotlight, where we're going to ask you a couple of questions around life and money. So the first question is around your life and money. So what is one thing that you're doing right now to live a meaningful and intentional life by design? Oh, such a wonderful question. For me, it's really just about my kids. My heart is for my kids to win. And there's no better way than not just talking about it, but literally getting in the trenches together. And so with our family, we have a company that sells shipping containers that we use as Airbnbs. And so my children, my 14 year old and my now 16 year old, each have their own little VRBO short-term rental that's in a shipping container. People want these experiential <laughs> outings and so forth. And so each of my kids have their little shipping container on our land we own out in the hill country. And here's what I said to them. I said, listen, y'all got to be responsible. So if I have to chime in on the conversations that are going on between the guests 
and you aren't greeting them and making sure they're having an exceptional time and you're not lining up the cleaner to come clean, you forfeit the money for their stay. So yeah. you're on it, like white on rice, making sure that their guests are taken care of and so they nice. get a of all the money coming in. So there's nice. no better way than to really just show them the ropes of how to take control of their destiny. Yeah, that I cannot wait. Such a better way to teach responsibility than buying your kid a dog. <laughs> yeah, I cannot wait till my kids are that age where I can delegate like that. <laughs> I tried doing it with my my eldest when she turned eight last year. I'm like, okay, here's the house. You're in charge. You know, you check the messages. You let me know. It didn't last too long. We're still working on it, but <laughs> I think we got a few years ahead of us. So I love that. Okay. Second question is around others, life and money. So what is one life or money hack that you might be able to share that'll make an impact on others' lives right now? Ooh, I'm going to share this because it's, I don't know, just hit my heart. So I'm going to share. Yeah. I feel like we hear so much, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like I hear so much like, oh, I don't have the money. I'm never going to be able to get started. How in the world am I ever going to be able to scale and invest in apartments and so on and so forth? Well, I will tell you, I want to share with you exactly how I structured this one deal. And I yeah. hope it gets your fire going like it did for me. And I'll try and, and short up and make it pretty quick. So basically, we were taking down this 36 unit apartment building. We were just keeping it between our Quattro team. And I was responsible for bringing my piece of the pie, which was $300,000. Okay. And so, yes, I could have refied my free and clear properties, but I woke up in the middle of the night with this like aha moment again. And so I took action with that little, what I got, and I got on the computer and I said on Facebook, how would you like to be the bank, make a great return and have it backed by real estate? And so really what I did is I had three individuals, they each brought $100,000 and the terms were extending, hear me out, the opportunity. How would you like to make 7% on your money, have it backed by real estate and Quarterly payouts, two-year minimum, three-year maximum. Within 48 hours, I had $300,000. Now that was brought to the table to close on this deal. The plan is to refinance it out in the next year. We'll pay them back. And now I'm a proud owner of 25% of an asset that did not require my money. It was just an opportunity that was extended. I did not beg. As a matter of fact, this is what speaks to my heart. The first quarterly payout went to the individual. I got a text message and it said, Aaron, the check just came in the mail today. Thank you so much for this incredible opportunity. Mm -hmm. That like makes my heart smile, right? Yeah. Because we make it a win-win versus yeah. having a manipulative approach. And you yeah. never know. So for any of you listeners out here, you're like using that excuse of, I don't have the money. Friend, go get strategic or give me a call and we'll talk shop and I'll find a way for you to make it work. But don't give up on yourself. There's so many different ways to make a deal. Yeah, especially in real estate. It's one of the reasons we talk about that on the show all the time. One of the reasons Annie and I love real estate too is that you have the ability to get so creative. And I think it's one of the few businesses that are out there that allows you that ability to get creative in so many different ways so that it's a win-win for everybody. Even at the 11th hour, there's so a way, there's always a way. It's just a matter of figuring it out and getting creative with that. And it's all teamwork too. That's another thing that I personally love about real estate is that I don't do this in my own world in a vacuum. I get to do it with Annie. I get to have you on the show. I get to you know talk with a bunch of different people. And I just, love it. And we all do it together. And that's the thing that I love too about real estate. So love that. And for the listeners, she's basically describing syndication. It's what Annie and I do as well, but that's basically what that was that she did. And I love that. And, you know, we should have you back on the show to talk about money raising That's something that, you know, Annie and I have done really well. We've mastered it. Something we do in our coaching program as well, but it's not an easy thing. And I think a lot of people have a lot of roadblocks with money raising. So love the couple of tips that you gave there as well. All right. Last question is around life and money in the world. So what is one thing that you're doing right now to make the world a better place? Well, <laughs> you'll find out very quickly. Quattro Capital is all about philanthropy. Hence, that's how we met. I'll shore this one up quick. We were at an event and there was a thousand people in the audience and it was for a real estate event. And they were asking what I did to celebrate when I closed on one of my first properties. 
And I said, you know what? Our family is really big about giving back. We travel to Nicaragua. We travel to Belize. We take our kids to Haiti. We build orphanages. And so with that being said, that's where our heart is. And to celebrate that close, we had built our 13th home for the single moms living out of a trash dump in Nicaragua. And I got really emotional on the stage and I started to get weepy. And all of a sudden I got a big, like burning in my heart. And I said, as a matter of fact, I would love to get two more people to match me and I'll build two more homes, $5,500 a piece. And in the back of the room, this gentleman stands up and says, I'm in for one home. And another female in the front stands up and says, I'm in. And Within uh, 10 minutes, we raised $55,000 and built 10 homes for the moms in Nicaragua. And so that's truly, truly where my heart is, is to help the less fortunate that can't help themselves and give my children incredible experiences like that, that will wreck one's heart. And you'll never truly be the same afterwards, not to mention fast forward, those two partners or those two people that stood up, the gentleman in the back and the woman in the front are my partners today talk about oh. alignment. So wow. super cool. Love mm-hmm. that. The quattro way indeed. Oh my goodness. Talk about a win-win and not only for your own real estate portfolio, but for your investors and for your family as well. So all around. Erin, tell our listeners, what's the best place they can go to learn more about all that you're up to so many things and to connect with you? Sure. The quattroway.com feel free, please, to go to our website. And better yet, there's a video of each of my partners. They're a minute long. I would love for you to get to know who our team is, what we're all about. And if you have any questions and how possibly you can move your net forward, let me know. I'd be happy to help or connect you with someone that perhaps can. It was a pleasure being on your show. I really appreciate you guys. Dr. Aaron Hudson, chiropractor, real estate investor, and co-founder of Quattro Capital, which as you heard, you can find online at thequattroway.com. Aaron, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story with all of our listeners. You've been listening to The Life and Money Show, the number one podcast for people who, like you, are living a meaningful and intentional life by design, building true wealth, and making an impact in the world. For more resources, check out goodegginvestments.com and be sure to join the Life and Money Show community on Facebook. And if you got value out of the show, please subscribe and give us a five-star review so we can continue to bring you amazing new conversations. 